Welcome to the Yes Effect Show, where success begins with yes. I'm Shelley Varela, possibility hacker, fire captain, author, and speaker. Each week, you get a front row seat as we deliver candid conversations with really cool people and inspiring ideas to help you harness the power of yes in your life. Let's jam. Wanda Wilt Chavis, welcome to the Yes Effect Show, buddy. How are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. My absolute pleasure. This may mark the very first podcast episode I've done that could actually save somebody's life. So thank you for being Ooh. here. <laughs> thank you. In our pre-chat, we were talking about your health journey. And I'm wondering if out of the gate, you can share kind of what that looked like and, and how we came to the moment where we're chatting about what we're about to unleash to the world, which more women need to know about. So where did where did the beginning of your story find you? Okay, so in 2008, my youngest son of three was just finishing college and I had just been doing all the mom things for, you know, the past 20 years and or more than that. And I just found out that I had breast cancer. So it was kind of a like, whoa, 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 you know, hey, wait, how did this happen to me? I thought I was, you know, I was a pastor's wife. I was doing all the, all good things. My life was good, a good life. And I drank this terrible juice every morning thinking that was going to just keep me healthy, <laughs> you know, how we all do. Yeah. And so I ended up having to have surgery and, you know, two surgeries in two weeks, I ended up having 33 treatments of radiation. But during that time, I just said, you know what, I want to find out. This is kind of how my brain works. I was like, I need to find out how I got cancer, how never to get it again, and how to help all my friends not ever get it. So I had always wanted to go back to school, but it couldn't because, you know, I was just raising babies. So I went back to college at 48 and got my Bachelor of Science in Alternative Medicine and then went on to get a master's degree in public health administration. So during that time, that, that six years of college, I, I learned so many things that I was like, okay, when I would study these subjects, I would be like, okay, I'm going to have that in my life. I will find this. Mm -hmm. And so there was things that just kind of, you know, thermography was one of them. Japanese water was one of them. Essential oils. I was already kind of dabbling in that, but I was like, okay, these plants were here for a reason. So I learned about so many modalities I wanted in my life. So Thermography was one of the things that because I was a breast cancer survivor and I had, you know, fiber cystic breasts, I had a, a mammogram every year for the past 10 years. And every time pretty much because I had fiber cystic breasts, it would be like, oh, we need you to come back in. We saw something on this side. And so every year I was doing multiple pictures and then some years they would find things and they would do a needle biopsy or cut it out or whatever. And so eventually, you know, at 48, I had cancer and my mom was a cancer survivor as well. So I was kind of in the back of my mind, always trying to make sure I was taking care of that. So thermography was something that I was like, that is amazing because there's no radiation, there's no compression, there's no pain. And so can you come, can you explain to everybody listening? So when, you know, everybody knows about when it comes to breast health or breast tests everybody hears the term mammogram and they kind of know what that means how do the two differ okay so first of all i just want to say that it's not like thermogram instead of a mammogram it's just okay. it's kind of like a an ekg and a heart sonogram there's two different tests but both of them are very vital and thermography is okay when you go to get a mammogram it's going to show you what's going on in your breast right now Mm -hmm. That's why every year you go back and they compare it to last year. Well, with a thermogram, it's going to show you anything that could maybe be cooking in there, even before, you know, maybe seven, eight years before it's actually a tumor. It could just be a, a pathology setup when you, and you're seeing the thermal setup there that's different than last year. Because and, what you explained to me was you said cancer is a living thing. Yes. And and so it needs a life source. So cancer is a living organism and your body's going to set up pathology. There's going to be blood going to it and it'll show up on the thermogram as, you know, activity. And especially like if it's in your left side and not your right side, there's, if there's not a symmetrical pattern there, there's something to look at here. Of course, now I'm just a tech. 
we take the pictures and we send them to doctors who are thermologists and they read those scans and send them back with their advice and report to the patient. But it's so interesting because like dense breast on a mammogram, everything just shows up white. So if there is cancer, which shows up white on a mammogram, a lot of times it's missed. And I didn't tell you this, Shelly, but inflammatory breast cancer, thermography is the only test that shows that. It's an inf inflammatory breast cancer is you have about two years before you are seriously in trouble. And with inflammatory breast cancer, when you are seeing a sign where it will like break through the skin or whatever through the nipple, you're like stage four. It's bad. So with thermography, it's going to show that inflammatory breast cancer in advance so that you can change your lifestyle. A lot of times, you know, if it's caught early, you can just change your lifestyle, change your diet. And there's so many things that you can do to, ch to change the trajectory of whether it's a uh, pre-cancer or cancer or whatever, just through your diet, your food is medicine. <laughs> so, right. you know, I'm a believer of that. Yes. So you as somebody who was on a quest to, I don't know, we were talking and you said, I wanted to find out why or how yeah. I got it and, and how not to get it. And how also to prevent other people in the future from getting it by giving them these tips, tools, tricks, whatever it is you learned. So when you discovered thermography, what was it about that you were saying to yourself, like, this is going to be a thing for me? Because eventually you ended up seeking somebody out. Right. So just knowing that it was, there was no radiation, I just kept thinking, did I give myself cancer? I mean, mammography is radiation and that's a carcinogen. It causes cancer. And I was doing that every year faithfully. And like I said, going back, maybe sometimes I would do 10 different films of one's breast. So the, I was looking at no compression, which that's big. Okay. If you've ever had a mammogram, oh yes, it is. <laughs> no touchy, no squeezy. <laughs> that's wonderful. No radiation. So this is a win-win. And then also, of course, in our studies, it was just showing that, you know, the history of it, it came out about the same time mammography came out, but pharmaceuticals picked up the mammography. It's much, uh, much more lucrative. I mean, like my office, the most expensive thing I could do for you would be $480. And that's like a full body from head to toe scan. Mm -hmm. And that's going to show like up to 70 different disease orders that could be going on in your body. My very first trip, I had tried, I'd found there was thermography in our area, which I told you I was like looking for thermography. I was like, oh, cool. There's somebody here in my area. And I could not get an answer. Nobody answered the phone. Nobody answered my email. And like a year later, I had this severe pain and I went to the doctor, I went to a couple of different doctors and they're like, we're pretty sure you have shingles, but you just don't have this outbreak yet. So I was like, I'm not going to take this medicine. They wrote me a prescription, just go ahead and start this medication. And so that day, this lady reaches out to me. She's like, I just found your email. I don't know where it's been, but I'm so sorry. I didn't get back with you last year. I will last offer you- Last year. It was a year ago. It was a that's, year. You can't tell me that that's not divine timing. Oh, it was divine. So I literally wound up in her office the next morning and she did the scans and found out I did not have shingles. I had two pinched nerves in my neck, which was causing all this havoc in my body. And from that conversation with her, found out that she was getting ready to sell her business. And I had just graduated with my master of public health administration. So I'm like, what in the world with my alternative medicine background and my master of public health was with complementary medicine as my focus. So I was, it was just a God thing. It really was. And so I went and got my certifications to work in that type of field with being a thermographer. And so here I am three years later, um, you know, just amazed at how, how many people don't know about thermography? And so right now I have clients that come in that doctors send into me that are actual cancer patients. They're having to watch spots that maybe they've done surgery, maybe they've done, already done chemo and they're just watching these areas, but there's no pain. I mean, I've got women that come in with fibromyalgia that cannot even do a mammogram because of the pain mm -hmm. and they they feel safe and they can actually see the pictures, even though you know, we don't diagnose them. We just have the pictures and it's obvious, you know, when you got no hot red spots, you know, you've got nothing that's looking angry 
it just gives you peace. Right. I know it does well, me. The other thing that was when you reached out to that woman and she's like, Hey, I, I found your email from a year ago. Um, mm -hmm. She was also selling the business at that time. Yeah, so she was. all of this was <laughs> you cartwheeling down the merry little path of breast health. Exactly. Um, so not only did you happen to have your alternative medicine and your master of public health at the time that she had your email in the queue for a year, a year. when she reached out to you was the exact same time she was looking to sell her business and you were perfectly primed and positioned to be the person yeah. to take it over. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, we talked earlier, I'm a 40 plus year pastor's wife. And so I've been just helping people all these years on the spiritual side. And now it's like after my cancer ordeal and the things that I learned and now with this thermography, it's like I'm able to put like whole health together. Like I'm helping them with their whole health, not just their just spiritual, which is very important, but we are whole. And a lot of times people say, well, you know, just pray about it. Well, honey, if you, if you need some diagnosis and you need some medication and you need some medical attention, there's that side too. It's real. We are whole people. And so it's just so gratifying to me that, that God led me on this path to where I'm actually able to help in a new way that the past three years have just been amazing. Um, well, well, it's not lost on me either that this message needs to be heard. So whoever out there needs this message and had not previously been familiar with thermography, it's interesting to me that you were part of a challenge that I did called Craft a Story the Media Will Share. And we are running that challenge again, by the way, January the 11th. But you were one of the people who, who won the prize to come here and be featured on this podcast. And I also don't think that that's an accident. So no worry. <laughs> so grateful to have you here. One of the things that you said, Wanda, was something that you almost never hear coming out of a woman's mouth, which is, I am a woman worth taking care of. Can yeah. you speak to the women who are out there listening right now? And you'd said that you were raising three kids and you were doing all the things and you're a pastor's wife and you're busy and, you know, helping out in the community wherever you can. And then this happens to you. And that is the moment when you realized, hang on a second. I am a woman worth taking care of. What advice would you give for those women out there right now who are running a business, raising a family, whatever that looks like, and are maybe burning the candle at both ends because they can, what advice would you give to them? Oh, I would just say that when you were created, your number one job, your number one mission was to take care of the temple that God put your spirit into. And, you know, as women, we're so driven to just take care of everybody. It's, it's, that's what women do. We're nurturers. But we have to remember that we can't give what we don't have. And so if you don't have health, you can't take care of your family. And once you lose your health, you know, if you can get it back, you're blessed. And that's how I feel. I feel like I got a second chance. Because when I woke up and realized, here I am, 48 years old, I've got my kids raised, but now I have cancer. I, I just like, it took me back. I said, you know what? I am a woman that is worthy of being taken care of, yet I have been waiting for everybody else to take care of me. And nobody can. Nobody can take care of you but you. I mean, I love my husband, but honest to goodness, even as much as I love him, I cannot make him stop drinking Mountain Dew. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I can take care of me. Only me. I can only take care of me and, and look after my health. And, you know, God forbid one day I'm in a situation where somebody has to take care of me in a bed. That's not, that's not living. I want to be able to be alive and healthy and successful and productive all of my life. And so if I don't do that, and these ladies that are listening and women that are listening that are, you know, you're, you're not being anybody's hero by just pushing your health to the back and taking care of everything else, it just doesn't even make sense when you really look at it. Like, who is manning the store? <laughs> Who's taking care of you if you're just putting you at the bottom of the list? Absolutely. And if we think in reverse, we are healthy until the moment, you know, unfortunately, some of us find out that we're not. Right. And then in that moment, when you're like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to take better care of myself tomorrow. I'm going to eat better or manage my stress better. I'm going to do that tomorrow. But today I'm really busy. 
But in that moment when you're like, ooh, maybe I should have done that in hindsight. For all of you listening out there right now, Wanda and I are giving you full permission to take care of yourself today, tomorrow, and every day. And yes. not at the point when you wish you would have taken care of yourself better. Wanda, if people are looking for you online, where is the best place they can find and connect with you? Well, I'm Wanda Chavis on Facebook. I have a wandachavis.com, which is on Facebook, a kind of a business page. My business has is picture of health and thermography. I have that page. But just if you look up Wanda Chavis, Wanda Wilt Chavis on Facebook, or I have wandachavis.com, they can find me there. And I'm on all those social media things as Wanda Chavis. And I do want to say that it is prevention is so much easier than cure. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so much easier just to take care of yourself and prevent as much as you can. You can't prevent what well, some, you can sometimes prevent a car accident, but you know what I mean? Things are going to happen. Like I always tell my husband about the Mountain Dew. I, I write him about the Mountain Dew. I'm like, Lord have mercy. Just, you know, drink water. Your body needs water. Not it's 90% water, not 90% Mountain Dew or 70%, whatever. So prevention is so easy. It's much easier than if, if you just go to the hospital and see these people that are having drips in their IVs. And even with this whole pandemic, everybody's so afraid. But hey, just build your immune system. That's your best defense is your immune system. So well, that's there my. So, there are so many preventables as well, you know, like stress being a massive one and diet one. and nutrition being another and yeah. rest and hydration and things like that. So. Absolutely. Um, I'm absolutely on the same page as you. Rhonda, we so appreciate you stopping by and sharing this incredible message. This, this is a message that is profound and far beyond our reach or our pay grade. Yeah. It could literally save people's lives. So thank you for stopping by and uh, sharing with us. You're amazing. Well, thank you for what you're doing. And I'm so glad I found you and I'm looking forward to your next challenge. Thank you so much. Cheers. Bye. We want you to know how much we value each and every one of you. We also know that you can spend your time anywhere, so we're super grateful that you came to hang out with us here on The Yes Effect Show. And for those of you who are interested in going even deeper, for those of you who are ready to step into your greatness, to grow that business, to step into your truth and do the brave thing, we've got something really special coming up for you. On January 11th, we are going to be re-hosting a challenge that has gotten people amazing results. That challenge is called Craft a Story the Media Will Share. And here's what it looks like. We will be going live every day for seven days. And by the end of the seven days, you will have a story that will first of all, avoid the automatic no when you pitch to people, when you're trying to get on podcasts or television or radio or print press or summits. And more importantly, position you as the go-to person for them to call on when they're looking for an expert in your niche. So for those of you who want to join us, it's a free challenge. It's starting January the 11th, and it's called Craft a Story the Media Will Share. We hope you join us. You can find the link at yesuniversity.com. That's yesuniversity.com. January 11th, Craft a Story the Media Will Share. Not only is it your time, but it's your time to be heard.